usually for the most part in hockey. Most players try their best to coexist for the greater good of the team, meaning that even though the impulse may be to deck the annoying teammate in the locker room, most players keep themselves in check and don't create chaos. However, there's been a select few over the years that despite being teammates, haven't gotten along in the slightest for various reasons. In this video, we're going to pick up where we last left off in this mini-series with part four, as we go over some more teammates that hated each other. And with that, here are eight teammates that hated each other. Even though they were never formally NHL teammates, Ryan Kessler and RJ Umberger were actually line mates while playing for Ohio State. Umberger, who was a couple years older than Kessler, ended up playing for three seasons with the Buckeyes. And prior to the start of his sophomore season, the forward was selected by the Vancouver Canucks 16th overall in 2001. Not long after, it was during his junior year from 2002 to 2003 that Umberger was teammates with Kessler. Kessler, who was able to impress, notched 31 points in 40 games during his draft year. And after being drafted by the Canucks 23rd overall in 2003, Kessler went on to make it legit with Vancouver by agreeing to a three-year deal valued at $1.672 I know, inflation is definitely a you-know-what. Anyways, remember how I mentioned that Umberger, despite being drafted earlier than Kessler, made the transition from college hockey to the NHL at the same time? Well, it just so happened that Umberger was also looking for his first NHL contract during the summer of 2003. However, after Kessler took what Umberger's manager thought was an offer on the lower end of the spectrum, Umberger sought out more money than Vancouver was willing to fork over in result. And according to the Hockey News, while Umberger's side viewed the tactic as taking care of business, Kessler didn't appreciate being used as a barometer by his old mate in a rivalry was born. And in case there was any doubt that this was blown out of proportion or there was never any beef, well, the spirited brawl that broke out between the two in January of 2009 should clear things up. The more recent bout of bad blood listed is the apparent rift that was between defenseman Eric Carlson and Brent Burns. Burns, who was initially traded to the Sharks from Minnesota in 2011, quickly became not only an integral part of San Jose's back end, but also the roster as a whole. Burns took pride in being the number one D-man on the roster and even had a trophy to show for his efforts, as he won the Norris in 2017. However, it wasn't long after that Burns had some competition when it came to being the best D-man that the Sharks had to offer. And it was in the off-season of 2018 that Ottawa made the bold move to trade their best player, Eric Carlson. And just like that, Carlson came to the Bay Area as a decorated defenseman in both 2012 and 2015. Carlson reigned supreme as the best blue liner in the league with two Norris trophies to his name at that point in time. And as most of us know, in the present moment, he has three. Anyways, it's not hard to surmise that Burns was forced to share some of the spotlight on the back end from there. Both D-men are right shot and play a similar style of game that's offensively driven. Therefore, when Pittsburgh reporter Mark Madden decided to reveal a bombshell about their relationship, well, some began to question if there was a grain of truth in there somewhere. Madden, while on a Trib Life podcast, said, I've also been told Carlson is vehemently against going to Carolina. He hates former Sharks defenseman Brent Burns. It thinks their style sucks. And their style does suck, he said. Now, there's a few things to point out here. That NHL insider Elliot Friedman confirmed that Carolina and Pittsburgh were both pursuing Carlson prior to the Penguins acquiring him. Also, Madden did accurately predict that Kyle Dubas was indeed going to be the next GM in Pittsburgh and that Carlson would be traded there. Well, yes, this should be taken with a grain of salt and was probably exaggerated. It's possible that Madden was onto something. The 1990s were a drama-filled decade in St. Louis. From the Brett Hull, Mike Keenan feud to the dispute we're about to touch on, reporters had plenty to talk about when it came to the Blues. After finishing out his contract with New Jersey, Brendan Shanahan decided to sign with St. Louis in the offseason of 1991. Considered one of the 100 greatest players to ever play NHL hockey, Shanahan, at that stage of his career, was only getting started. 
and it was midway through Shanahan's debut season with the Blues that Craig Janney was treated to the show-me state. Luckily for the Blues, the pair clicked right away on ice and were even affectionately known as Shani and Janney by the fan base. Besides their on-ice chemistry, the duo got along pretty well off-ice also. Unfortunately for Craig, however, Shanahan made a rather intense connection with his wife at the time, Catherine. So much so that she ended up leaving him for his teammates and so-called friend in the end. And unsurprisingly, Blue's management quickly had a dilemma on their hands. Obviously, to leave both Shanahan and Janney on the roster would be a grave mistake. GM and head coach at the time, Mike Keenan, made the decision to trade Janney to the San Jose Sharks in March of 95. At the time, despite the fact that rumors were swirling around a potential affair being the reason, many thought Iron Mike, as he was known, was to blame. As Keenan often had his run-ins with players, and as I mentioned, he was also acting GM at the time, so it would have made sense if there was beef. But at least this time anyways, it wasn't Keenan who wanted Janney gone. Regardless, Shanahan ended up being traded as well months later to the Hartford Whalers in exchange for Chris Pronger. To say that this rivalry was overshadowed back in the day was an understatement. Due to Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin's beef getting the most publicity, well, there wasn't as much attention given to the one that involved Ovechkin and Evgeny Malkin. The two were first teammates in the early 2000s and have been over the years while representing Team Russia. Interestingly, the World Juniors of 2005 resulted in Team Canada snagging the gold that was ironically led by Sidney Crosby, a common opponent of the two at the time, but for Malkin anyways, this would soon change. Despite having roots in the same country, however, as I alluded to, Shortly after Malkin and Ovechkin entered the NHL, the camaraderie was for a time forgotten. And by shortly, I mean sometime after 2006. And it was a couple years after Malkin finally played his first game for Pittsburgh that things between Malkin and Ovi appeared to go south fast. As a pair, while exchanging some brutal hits and almost dropping the gloves at one time, had a bitter rivalry that was hard to ignore. And the reason? Apparently, according to multiple sources, both in Russia and Canada alike, Ovechkin threw a swing at Malkin's agent in the middle of a Russian nightclub in Moscow. The old saying, time heals, apparently applies here because, from a spectator's view anyways, in recent years, the two have been coexisting with ease. In conclusion, it's been rather fun as a Pens fan anyways, watching the Crosby Ovechkin and Malkin Ovechkin rivalries in particular evolve over the years. And it's quite possible that we'll eventually do a video on NHL stars that hated each other as well. If you're new to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe, as this will be the start of a flurry of content from yours truly to kick off the season. And also, if you'd like to support me, you can do so by shopping with Liquid IV. Simply use my promo code Alyssa Hope in all caps to receive 20% off and free shipping. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.